Hello, welcome back to Own Your Mom at Co. I'm Nicole, and today we are going to dive right in. We're gonna create a tap to start screen specifically for drop off photo booth clients. What I try to do for my tap to start screens for drop off photo booth clients is communicate as clearly and effectively as I can while still maintaining some of those design elements that I really want to kind of keep. So we're gonna jump right in. I'm gonna start sharing my screen with you guys. Very first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open up Canva. I have the pro account. I believe it's like $12.99 a month. Well worth it. Uh, definitely recommend getting it if you're going to be in, involved in any part of designing the elements for your photo booth or creating Instagram, social media content, flyers, anything like that. Canva is a really, really great resource and um, widely used by a lot of people. I have a couple of tutorials in my YouTube channel um, that go over kind of social media and um, templates for your photo booth. So uh, make sure to check those out and I'll link those below too. But right now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to start off with our perfectly sized tap to start screen, which is going to be 2048 pixels by 2732 pixels. Um, this is the exact dimensions that you need if you're using the Salsa photo booth. Um, if you're using any other kind of photo booth software that is able to integrate custom designs, just double check and make sure that you have the correct sizing for that. But this is more of like a portrait size, um, which should be used on a variety of different kind of screens. So first thing I'm going to do, obviously, um, have the correct sizing ready. And then I'm going to start pulling in all of the elements that I need. So typically this is going to be any kind of logo, any kind of design. So for this one, we're just going to use my logo and kind of create a mock-up design and pretend that my company is the, um, is the company we're designing for today. First thing I'm going to do is pull my logo in and decide the route that I'm going to go. Let's do like a really corporate design. So one thing that I like to do whenever I'm trying to get ideas for designs, uh, first, I'm going to try and get as much information for my clients. So my event questionnaire is going to ask them their theme, their colors. It's going to ask for a flyer and um, try and get as much information as possible. So there's a, the a least amount of back and forth with the client and you. Um, if the client, all the client is sending you their logo, then you can kind of adapt to that. So, um, let's go into templates. That's one way that I like to, if I'm just like kind of just starting from scratch and needing to create something, um, from that, I'll go into templates and maybe type in like corporate and, um, obviously you have to spell it right. Um, and kind of see what it brings. Obviously it's picking up the size of the template and the design and it's thinking that I'm creating a flyer. Obviously I'm not, but it will be a good way for me to get some elements. Um, this one's pretty cool. So if I click on this, it's going to replace everything that I just put on my screen, which is actually fine. I can always pull up what I had before. You can use this um, backspace up here and it'll erase what you just did. Um, one thing I do like to do is I like to have, when I'm designing something, I like to have a main page that it, I just dump all of my information on that I want to keep. So I'll put all of my logos, I'll throw the flyers on there even, and, um, just to get like all of the information on one and then I'll create another page and that's where I'll start designing. The problem that you can have if you only have one page and you start building around it is if something were to happen and you accidentally delete, you can't recover it, like your all of your stuff is gone. So I like to have an inspiration page and then I like to have a design page. So let's just have another page ready to go. I'm gonna go back into that design I was just in to click on that and obviously it's gonna take over the page again. And let's get started. So, um, what, what I love about using already made designs is you can just adjust it to what you need and make something really awesome. So I don't need any of this text. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of this. And I'm using holding down shift so I can select all of these elements and delete. Now I just have these really cool gradient pieces, but I wanted to match my logo. So let me get, what happened to my logo? 
All right, I wanted to match my logo. And um, so let's pull in some of these. Let's click on this. And then up here, you'll be able to select color. And then if you're using Chrome, which I highly recommend you're, you, you use when you're designing um, in Canva, is if you click on this, you can click on this button and um, select the color that you wanna use. So I'm just gonna hover right over my pink on my logo and decide which color, which gradient I'm going to use. And let's try, let's try this darker pink color and see what happens if I can get there. There we go. And then let's try another color. Let's try this lighter pink and see which one I like better. Hmm. I actually like the lighter pink more. So I'm gonna go here. And actually what I love too is it's picked up the photo colors already. Um, so I can kind of toggle between these and see which one I like. And I kind of like that one. Okay. So let's just say we do this. Obviously I can also do, if I wanted to do less pink and more of this color, I could do that if I wanted to incorporate both colors. And um, for the sake of the demonstration, this is just what I'm gonna use. This is going to be, the whole point of this event is going to be to showcase my logo. Now what I wanna do is I want to, if I wanted to like manipulate this at all, I can, um, Take this little thing and go this way, straight up and down. That might be cool, like just to have it hanging from the top and bottom like this. All right, I kind of like that. Okay, so next part of it, we've got our design, we've got our logo, we're done, right? Not so fast. I want to create a button on my booth that basically tells the client that they have to press this button to start the photo booth. Do they need to press it? No, they can literally touch anywhere on the screen to get the photo booth process going. But I want them to think that it has to be interactive. It has to, it requires some sort of interaction, some sort of touching. So the best way to do that is a button and people love buttons. So I'm gonna go over to elements and I'm just gonna type in button. Let's see what that brings up. Um, you can do graphics, photos, but let's start off with graphics and see which button we like the best. Obviously, this one is a little interactive. Let's see if we can customize this. And we can. Look at that. I love how it has a little animation. So we can customize these colors to be our colors. Let's see if we like this. Not really. Let's go to another one. This one's pretty cool. I like how it's kind of glowing and look here, there's other options as well. That might be a good one. It kind of goes, it's a little different. You can always customize these colors obviously. Um, but let's try this. Let's try that bolder color. All right, we've got our button and just always make sure you're centering things. So where that solid line is, that means it's button centered. So now I wanna add text. So let's click on this text button and click add text box. It makes this tiny itty bitty text box. Obviously that's not what we're gonna use. We're going to increase our size dramatically. All right, now I am going to be giving my client instructions. So I want to tell them that they have to tap to start. I'm gonna write tap to start. And then I'm gonna tell them how many pictures they have to pose for. So let's just say that they're going to be posing for three photos. So I'm going to literally write out, actually I'm gonna leave tap to start as one text box and I'm just going to click duplicate, and put it right underneath and then say pose for three photos. All right, and now I'm gonna make this bigger because I want them to not miss this. I want them to very clearly click, read and click. I'm also gonna change this font color. I wanna change it to white because I feel like that would stand out a little bit more.
So now very clearly I have my design, I have my logo, and I have a very clear button that says tap to start pose for three photos. There's no confusion here on what the client has to do. They need to tap to start and then they'll pose for three photos. What I can do to make this even more fun and interesting is I can um, add effects to this. So if I wanted to, those words to pop out even more, I like adding shadow and then I'll click shadow and I'll click color and I'll change it to black to give it a really, make it pop visually. Um, I could do that same thing here. Okay. And then I could go into animate. Animate's really fun. You can make it really, really pop. I like burst. Um, I feel like it stands out quite a bit. And you could either do that for both tap to start and post for three photos or just one. For this, I think I'm just gonna do tap to start. So let's just click this play button and see what it looks like. Yeah, I feel like I'll tap to start that, right? Okay, so that is my tap to start screen. So for my drop off photo booths, what I do is I do not enable any filters and I don't enable any masks. Anything that requires them to touch the screen any more than tapping to start initially. It just eliminates any confusion because what happens sometimes is if you have, if you've enabled options like more than just photos or um, masks and filters, that's a lot of screens that they have to kind of tap through, which can get confusing. People who have never encountered a photo booth um, tend to get really confused and intimidated and then they don't use it and that's not the purpose. We want them to take photos. So um, I don't enable any mask. I don't enable any filters. All I want to happen is when they tap the screen, it starts to count down and it takes photos and then they send it to themselves and that's it. That way it's very, very simple, very straightforward and there's no confusion. The last thing I want is for them to tap the screen and then not know what to do because they don't see the next button or anything like that. So um, basically after the client taps the screen, it's gonna take their three photos and then it's going to take them to another screen. Um, what I typically do for my designs is I will duplicate this entire page. So I'm just gonna go up here and click duplicate page. It's gonna copy everything over. And this screen is what the guests are going to come to whenever they want to kind of take that next step. So when they select photo or when they, um, when they want to text themselves, email themselves, anything like that, it's going to come to this screen. So what I do is I, again, like I said, just duplicate that tap to start screen to keep those same brand colors. And what I'll do is I'll just take this logo, make it a little bit smaller so it's out of the way and put it right here at the top. Um, and then I'm going to delete these buttons, obviously. So now when the client finishes taking their photos, their photo is gonna populate in this middle area and um, then they'll select text, email, airdrop, whatever. And um, it's all kind of the same design. So two birds, one stone with this kind of concept. So that is tap to start screen and background screen is what I call this. And um, that's complete. I would upload this into Salsa for my drop-off photo booth client. Um, and you know what? Let's just go over there and show you an example of how I would upload all of this. All right, first thing I'm gonna do when I have my events, I'm gonna click Configure Event. I'm gonna go to Event Interface. And here is my Tap to Start screen and background screen that I am going to upload. So I'm gonna go back to this. I'm going to download this first page as a MP4. And that's because I have a live animation. So I want this to actually be a video. So I'm going to just download this one as an MP4. And then I'm gonna download my second page as a PNG. Um, one thing to just be aware of is sometimes PNG saves as a very large file. So you'll have to either compress it here or compress it elsewhere. I recommend just using this platform if you can. Let's just see though if it does generate a large file. So we're just going to do it normally. I'm only selecting this page to download as a PNG. 
All right, yeah, this is under the requirement, so that one's good to go. And then my MP4 is almost done. All right, that one's done. So now I'm gonna go back into my screen, click on tap to start screen, upload my file, go into my downloads, and click my tap to start. All right, there's my tap to start screen, there's my background screen. Um, from here, I'm really, I am, for this fake event, I'm not going to put my disclaimer up, but if you wanted to, you would just do that. And um, if you wanna see kind of what it looks like within the booth, we're just gonna go over to event proposals. I'm gonna turn this on and you're gonna select the booth that you're using. So for this, we'll just do salsa and I'm gonna click on proposal. And here is what it will look like with the LEDs active, with the animation and everything. Um, if I wanted to adjust those LEDs, cause those are definitely not my colors. Let's go to LED ring and then let's customize this. That looks similar to my color. All right, so there is my tap to start screen with my LED ring and there is my drop off photo booth event. The second part of my drop off photo booth experience besides the very clear communication in my screen is going to be a sign that I include. I'm gonna show you just how, what I communicate on there. Okay, so here's a look at a previous um, design that I did for a client. I just removed the client logo. So let's just say we add our logo in here. And so let's just say this photo booth is sponsored by On The Moment Booth. Honestly, this is not an expectation that the client had on me. This is an added value that I provided my client. And um, I'm just gonna go in here and bring in some of those elements that we had in our initial design. So I'm just gonna go in and copy to kind of tie the whole experience in together. And then basically what this provides is additional communication on how to use the photo booth. So I'm telling my client very clearly to tap the screen, pose for how many, however many photos, and then click the text or email button and then how to save their photo. That way there is no confusion. People waiting in line can read this before they even enter the photo booth. And then they have that additional communication on the screen telling them what to do. Um, will people read this? Maybe, maybe not. But what it does provide at, all, at, at the very least is an additional opportunity for you to share your client's logo. So um, if I were to be actually using this for an event, then I would be um, changing all of these little elements here to reflect the same colors that I want to do. So, so that is what I would stick inside of my sign and um, provide for my clients. I'll usually kind of put that at the entry anywhere where I think the client is going to come in or wherever the flow of traffic is going to be so that they can come in, read it if they can, go in, take their photo. Another value is if they, for some reason, don't see this, walk right past this page, they'll at least still see that very clear prompt on the screen. So that is how I design the elements for my drop off photo with clients. So I hope this has been helpful and I can't wait to see what you guys do with your designs and your drop off photo booth client. Don't forget to check out my website ownyourmoment.co for additional educational content and we'll see you guys in the next video.